We are here to explore why solar energy is the only option for Pakistan to avert a looming energy crisis. My name is Harun Junedi. I'm a UK-based engineer and I've been studying, teaching and working in the field of renewable energy for the best part of two decades. We would all like to see a powered up Pakistan surging into the 21st century, but there are problems. So let's get right into them. Let's have a look at a few facts first. The average demand is about 17 gigawatts, which is growing all the time. The average supply hovers around 12 to 13 gigawatts. So there is a shortfall of four to five gigawatts on average. Not only that, most of the electricity comes from burning fossil fuels. In fact, almost 64.2% of the electricity in Pakistan comes from burning fossil fuel, that is oil and gas. This adds energy insecurity and reliance on imports. Now, let's compare Pakistan to a tiny country in its vicinity, the UAE. Last year, UA consumed almost the same amount of electricity as what Pakistan did. And this is astounding. Why? Because UA is only 9 million in population, where Pakistan is 180 million strong. So more than 20 times the population, and yet the energy consumption was the same. And this gives us a clue to Pakistan's energy problems. Now, bear in mind, that UA is not a great uh, comparison, not a great benchmark. Why? Because it has an above average energy consumption. But nonetheless, this gives us some degree of perspective. The energy poverty has really crippled the Pakistani industry. It has stunted our commercial sector, exports have declined, and services have been restricted. We cannot compete in the modern market with up to 10 hours of electricity blackouts a day. And being tied up with fossil fuels make Pakistan energy market very volatile and insecure. We have to remember that these fuels have to be imported and regional security can become a problem in the future. So often, pipe dreams of exploiting the third coal reserves are fed to the public to quell dissent. However, this low quality coal can only be used after gasification, and this would require huge infrastructure costs. The existing grid infrastructure in Pakistan is frankly obsolete, shambolic, and threadbare. Moreover, Pakistan still doesn't have a separate Ministry of Energy like most countries. What we have is a Ministry of Water and Power. So, there has to be a paradigm shift in the way of our thinking. Fortunately, there is a way forward, and that way is solar energy. Okay, now let's have a look at the four main reasons for solar energy. And the number one reason is that solar energy is extremely cheap. In fact, this energy has the potential to come down as low as five rupees per kilowatt hour. Now, back in 2010, it had been reported in USA that solar energy at an Air Force base in Mojave Desert was costing only five cents per kilowatt hour. Solar panel prices since then have considerably dropped. In fact, today they are as cheap as chips. The overall energy system cost can be as low as $1.6 or 200 rupees for every watt of installation and it can come down further with government subsidies. So for example, a four kilowatt system would only cost seven lakh rupees and that can make a small family completely grid independent. The second reason for going solar is the scalability option it gives. You can have domestic installations that can provide energy to a single home. You can also have utility scale solutions powering a whole town. The efficiency of a solar energy system does not change with scale, unlike other power sources. One does not have to start with a four kilowatt system. People can start small and scale up their systems with time. 
if someone goes for a larger system then the price per kilowatt hour does go down because of economy of scale but it does not matter an iota if somebody goes for a small system or a larger system in terms of the efficiency reason number three for solar energy is that Pakistan is blessed with abundant solar resources. In many regions in Pakistan, the solar resource is more than 5 kilowatt hour per meter square per day. Now compare that to the UK where the average remains around just 2 kilowatt hour per meter square per day. Pakistan is more than twice better off. Now depending upon the location and cost, on average, a solar system would pay itself back in less than four years in Pakistan. And furthermore, Pakistan lies in the vicinity of China, where more than 65% of the panels used around the world are made. Our import cost is fairly low. Solar energy frees us from importing heavy furnace oil. We can also use solar water heaters instead of our gas boilers for hot water our industry can use solar water heaters for economizer to lower their steam production cost and we can save tremendous amount of gas and use it where it's most needed that is in meeting the fluctuation in the electricity demand reason number four is the infrastructure or lack of it now, in many ways, Pakistan's infrastructure suits solar energy because solar systems can be installed not only in places where grid electricity is absent, but also where it is present. Pakistan already has an existing cottage industry that makes one of the cheapest UPS systems in the world. These UPS systems can be directly integrated with the solar PV systems and can also provide energy storage options. Now we have often noticed that the substations and the PMTs trip because of overload. Solar PV systems would reduce the load on the grid. We know that the grid system providing electricity to the domestic sector is extremely shambolic and it is difficult to stop electricity theft. Solar energy will provide a relief from both these problems. So what needs to be done by the government? Well, the first step it can take is provide a level playing field for the solar market to flourish. The duty on the panels as well as the related accessories like inverters should be slashed. In fact, subsidies should be given. Pakistan can also benefit from assembling its own panels and manufacturing its own solar water heaters. The government should encourage this industry by providing tax relief. Furthermore, the government should also ensure that the system providers are trained so that safe and efficient system installation is ensured. Lastly, provision for net metering and feed-in tariffs would also greatly incentivize the solar revolution. We need to focus on several small-scale installations rather than a few large ones. With solar energy covering the domestic sector, more gas and electricity would be freed up to be used by the industry. More importantly, solar energy instills a change in attitude. We as a society become more conservationist in energy as opposed to consumerist, and that has environmental benefits. In the last decade, the world has shifted massively towards renewable. The costs have spiraled down, and even in China, which is the workshop of the world, fossil fuel consumption is on the decline since 2014. Already in Pakistan, solar tube wells are getting installed. We need to take this progress further. We need to democratize solar energy. We need to exploit a rich solar potential and we need to do it fast. Thank you for your attention. I hope it was informative. Pakistan, Zindabad.